This conference will now be recorded. Father, I thank you for your presence with us as you join us for wherever we are as we have this time of Bible study. I just pray that you will be with us and open our hearts and minds to the things that you would have us learn and give us wisdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hand the uh, mic over to Irene to start with. I do think other people will start coming on here. Here's Irene. So in the Bible, we talk a lot about pomegranates in the temple, in the sanctuary. And it's a pomegranate and a bell and a pomegranate and a bell. So what benefits is a pomegranate? Well, it's very high in antioxidants, high in fiber and vitamin C. Um, it helps lower high blood pressure. It's high in potassium. It works with the kidneys. It uh, a complete uh, carbohydrate. It's an anti-inflammatory. It fights cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, and erectile dysfunction. So what vitamins is it high in? I spoke of C already and then Folate, it's high, very high in folate. Now, vitamin K is very important to take vitamin D and put it into your bones. So it's very high in K. So, and it has tons of other awesome nutrients. And it is spoken of and 24 Bible verses. So look up uh, pomegranates in your Bible and see what you can learn. All right, so we, yeah, we've got uh, Anthony Marcel, Scarlett in Indiana on mute for right now. And I think we probably have Kyle with us. He generally is a caller one if he's not able to and he's on mute. So, Ron, uh, you're going to have to step up here a little bit today. And then in the room, my wife's interpreting uh, for Ken. Ken's 60th birthday is today. And we have Wayne in the room and myself. So we're going to go ahead and get started at this point. Um, what was the question that I asked um, this last week uh, in the text? Well, the question was, what character attributes uh, do we do we have do have? Well, as, I, I, okay, I worded that poorly. I can see that now. Well, you, you you thought about the word, but didn't type it. I've done that. Um, have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ based on Galatians five twenty two and twenty three. Um, that says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law awesome so what character attributes do we have an inheritance in the kingdom of christ and what would the answer be well i'm going to suggest love mm. um because well my the co-pastor and I at the church I was at before I moved south uh, went through a series on the fruit of the spirit. Uh, being singular, uh, there were a number of uh, commentators who suggested that love was the fruit he's really talking about, but all of the other things mentioned here were facets of love. Well, I, I would absolutely agree. Um, but could we not go down the next piece, uh, joy? If we're going to have joy, um, isn't love an aspect of joy too? Well, all the love, the, the joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, yeah. goodness. So I think we peace. could look at every single one of the character qualities in that way. 
Yes, that was uh, the point of the commentators that, that we were looking at. Yeah, and um, but then if we look at the world, what do we find? We find Galatians or uh, Ephesians uh, five five, and Ephesians five five is anything but love. You want to read uh, Ephesians five five for me? Sure. For this you know that no whoremonger or unclean person or nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God and of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty clear. I think that's pretty clear, very clear. Do you remember where we were at uh, within who, what, where, when, why last week? I think that, we were we were still talking about when. When, okay. There it is. All right. And I think you mentioned Revelation twenty one seven or someone did. Revelation twenty one seven? Oh, oh twenty one yeah. eight maybe? That was me. I mentioned Revelation twenty one seven. Oh, it's your fault. Yeah, definitely my fault. <laughs> I would say seven and eight then, because uh, yeah. eight brings in some pretty. Um, yeah. Um. Because eight looks at the 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 um other side of the coin. Yes. Um, which does the fruits that don't get in. Um, they get into the second death instead. Um, do you guys have uh, the ability to read now? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Scarlet, Revelation 21, 7 and 8. Okay. Ready when you are. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable abominable and murderers and harmonious and sorcerers and idolaters. Idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Does anybody have any questions about any of those big words that we just used there? Is there any words that are unclear to anybody? Okay. So. Fire and brimstone. That's how can. What's that? Fire and brimstone. I just wondered what that said. So what is fire and brimstone? I, Irene? Brimstone is sulfur. And where do we see that used? Besides here in a place called Sodom and Gomorrah, fire and brimstone from the sky. All right, so when, what's a when in here? Uh, what's a when in here? In Revelation 21. No, 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 Ephesians 5.5. 5. Oh, that's on Ephesians 5. <laughs> Sorry, I've got it wrong. <laughs> I'm going back over to Ephesians well, 5, 5. Only only our father knows that one. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> Anyone? So uh, go ahead. Uh I don't I don't know which one it was, but go ahead, Scarlett. I think. Yeah. Um for when in when he uh, when in how pronounce it inherit the kingdom of Christ mm. and God, 
when no longer no longer an unclean person nor covetous man who is an adulterer. Mm. So when is the inheritance of the kingdom? Keep talking. Um, when you no longer then like no having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Speak up, Scott. Oh, when you no longer the negatives. All right. So when is the inheritance? Let's look at Romans eight seventeen. Romans eight seventeen. Um, Wayne, do you have the ability to have Romans eight seventeen? Romans eight seventeen. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. Amen. All right. So what do we have for when? Anything else? All right. I do think we talked a little bit on when last week, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump us down to how. How for Ephesians 5.5. 5. What do we have for a how? Are we there? Is there anybody there? No, just not seeing anything. Okay. So color two, who's color two? Okay, so color two, silent two, welcome to the call. Glad to have you on. Um, all right, so all right, so let's break down this how. Um, do certain people live life uh, in a how as a whoremonger? Can you, if you, if you go down uh, life, like my dad was an alcoholic and I could go worse, but uh, it just wasn't a good situation for me. Um, he was an unclean person. He coveted alcohol. And I wanted to have a dad that would, that would actually take care of me. But his how, his life how was in living the way of the world but we are called to a different way rather than idolizing alcohol and such like that we're called to become uh children uh ready waiting and wanting an inheritance and it's what like an inheritance it is Anthony? Uh, it's Marcel. Uh, my dad's Marcel. just making putting some food out for the kids at the minute. But I was to say, it's like uh, Satan's craving us and craving our body and trying to make our body uh, want the adulteress, want the covetousness, want the uncleanness, want the fornication more than what we want, what, what, what we need more. It's like uh, if we need a drink, should we drink uh, Pepsi or should we drink water? What's going to do is them the better the better for us in the long run rather than in the short term it might seem better at the short term i'll have a i'll have i buy a bottle of pepsi and not a bottle of water but we'll go on this big long walk the pepsi's gone and you're still thirsty after it's gone in fact you're thirsty once you've finished it like once the adulteress gas adultery he wants more of it he don't just want adultery one like, whereas it's not filling, is it? It's not going to fulfill you. Whereas uh, with the spiritual side of things, if you have Jesus, you only need him once. Well, he's there and you don't, you don't, like, there's, it's, there's full abundance of him. You don't need to keep going for more and more. It's just there. You can go to him once and just stay with him. Like, full thing. but I know some people do go off track and then come back to track but he's always there the abundance is still there it never left 
his hands always reached out through the full time period since before the beginning to the end at times. And I would absolutely agree with that. Um, what I would also say is, sadly, sometimes humanity craves Satan. Amen. This. When we look and we see the uh, grass on the other side of the fence, obviously, you know, I've got the short end of the sick. I've got to uh, do something about that. Yeah. And that's when we get in trouble. Instead of it being God do something about it, like us praying for God to do something, or go in in the fulfillment in the body of Christ, doing something with what God intends us to do, we go and do something what we intend us to do like we think that's righteous to do like to go over there and kill someone because they did something wrong and that's just making more evil in the world it's and then who do we blame horrible. once we who do we blame once what we wanted to do blows up on us god yeah exactly we blame god but it was our decisions our choices our actions our everything and we need to take responsibility instead. He's can. <laughs> I've got something to say about it. It's all right, Anthony. It's like the one like people say the greatest thing the devil did is convince people that he doesn't exist. But that's but before he did that, he convinced people that he is actually good that he is God. And then then he convinced people that he as God doesn't exist. And leaves people feel lost because the search for God. And instead of finding God, because you have to find God through Christ, there's no other way. If you go looking for God by yourself without Christ, you find Satan instead. You don't find the Father. You find your own Father, your own vain imagination of what that might be. And and then when you find something that you wish you never found, then you just tell yourself that it doesn't exist. And it leaves people lost. And that's where Christ comes in, because he's the good shepherd who brings people into the flock. Amen. Based on what you just said, let's read 2 Thessalonians 2 4. Let's see. Uh, um, Marcel? 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 2 4. 2 Thessalonians. Who opposeth and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Does God uh, exalt himself above everything that's called God? No. Does God oppose God and everything that is worshipped in God? No. Does God sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God? No. Nope. Uh, this is not a God reference. This is Satan's deluded mind. Yeah, it's the same Getting as Isaac. Getting to the point of even putting in a capital G, God. Because that can't be a reference to God. God that, nope. that, that just not attributes that would fit God. No. It's, uh, it's diluted. It's uh changed it's twisted it's like I, I think diluted would be too weak of a word twisted yeah. yeah but um yeah I, I, you, yeah it's like, basically it's that verse it does a good job of showing satan's mind yeah i mean it's the set it's pretty much word for word as isaiah is it 14 or 15? I can never remember. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's pretty much the same as that. I will do this and I will do that. And it's the same yep. word. And it's the yep. sad character of Satan. It, it changes a lot, but it doesn't change, if you know what I'm saying. It's just like he's always the like man that wants to be God and he's the best thing since sliced bread and he does this and he does that. Not even the father brags up as much as he does, and the father does do all the works, but he don't. He don't have that characteristic like, look at all this that I did. That's how Satan's going. Look at what all I did, and I did this. It's just uh, completely different, the opposite of what the father does. 
Amen. All right, let's delve into uh, GLS Commentary of Encouragement. After expounding on the previous four verses, we then arrive at what Paul considers a statement of the obvious. For this we know. Stated in my own words, I might have said something like, this is not rocket science. In the way of Paul, he then goes forward in this verse to identify three types of people that we are to know something about. Whoremongers, unclean, and covetous. As I think my thoughts forward on these three items, there are ways in which I could find exceptions to what will be shared, but the overall scope of things is what I'm after here. Whoremongers would be kin to, what, to that which we do. It's our actions flowing forward into a world of chaos and confusion. Um, let's see. Indiana, 1 Corinthians 10.31. Ah, ten. One second. One second, just getting it for her. Thirty one, did you say? First Corinthians ten thirty one. All right, all right. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever. Ye do, do all to the glory of God. What's that, honey? Oh. Huh? Should I read it? Okay, yeah. so she, they couldn't, uh, Irene couldn't hear. Could you go ahead and repeat that? Okay. Shh. Okay. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Unclean would be kin to our inner and outer bodily purity. Before I go there, so how much are we to do to, to the glory of God? All. All. Not 90%, not even 95%. All. That sometimes gets a little bit tough, but if we understand the dynamics of why, it should not be tough at all. Unclean would be kin to our inner and outer bodily purity. First Corinthians three sixteen. Just, Anthony, just, sorry, I was just going to say, you know, when I was thinking when you were reading that verse thirty one, I was thinking about Romans fourteen twenty three. Um, just a minute, Wayne. Okay, go ahead. Who? Uh, what were you saying, Anthony? When you were reading First Corinthians ten thirty, was it thirty one? First I was Corinthians ten thirty one. I was thinking about it's really it's, it's, it's echoed basically what's in Romans fourteen twenty three. Okay, go ahead. Romans fourteen. Master, can you get Romans fourteen twenty three? Go ahead, read that. Fourteen, did you say? Yeah. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. Mm. Is that really talking just about food, though? No, everything, even a simple thing like food. So it's like even the things you don't see, the importance of even that's significant to faith because breathing, eating, speaking, your family, what about, everything. What about speeding? Do, Say that again. What about speeding? Speeding? Yeah, like down the road in a car. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. Everything's just, it's all, it just, it literally just depart, depends which camp you're studying and what, for what the reasons you, you're doing it. If you're doing it for yourself, then it's sin. And if you're doing it for God, because for whatever reason, 
then it would be a completely different thing. What about what about um, speaking harshly? Hmm. Well, again, that would be the dependent on the content of what's within the conversation. Well, that's true. But I'm thinking like in an anger type situation. Be that angry, be angry and sin not. A million percent. All right, so let's go but to. I'll also talk about in previous like Ephesians versions, like getting control of your tongue and getting control of your, uh, getting control of your body, not let your body rule your spirit, but let your spirit rule your body, like sort of thing. I'm not sure. The tongue is a wicked and uh, something and deceitful. Uh... I, I'm not thinking of the, I think it's in Psalms. Uh, who can know it? Here, let me see if I can find it just real quick. James 3.8. Boy, was I off. <laughs> <laughs> James 3 8, who has that for me? Ron, do you have that? Yes. Uh, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So, in our flesh, we cannot tame the tongue. And even in our, even in our uh, spiritual life, we cannot tame the tongue. But we certainly can go to the ton master and let him tame the ton. Like a ton and, you know, I'm probably just talking to myself, but there's times when I get upset, especially at, uh, well, uh, my wife. Uh, I am learning in the process not to erupt. I, I wish I was perfect at it. I'm not. Um, but the more that I proceed, the more I work on it, the better it is. So I mean, we came up with a system that seems to be working very well um, on that whole issue. But I am in the process of being structured into or changed into uh, the character that God desires me to have. All right. Um, did we read 1 Corinthians 3.16 yet? No. All right. Anthony, go ahead. Could you pass that to somebody else? Okay. Um, let's see. Irene, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Covetous is the mental mind thought process. Colossians, Colossians 3, 2. Um, set your affection on the things above, not on the things of the earth. With these thoughts brought forward, and I just, uh, I do that sometimes. Hang on one second. I lost my place. I'm trying to get back there. With these thoughts brought forward, we then arrive at a most interesting statement. Who is an idolater? At first glance, I saw that coveting made one an idolater, which is quite true. As I set myself to the affection of what another has, I am idolizing their possessions, thus removing my mind from where it and to whom it should be focused. But then the greater intent of this verse was unfolded to me. If I allow myself to become a whoremonger, 
then suddenly I am idolizing whatever it is that I am doing. There is no one who did this. How did it turn out? There is one who did this. How did it turn out for him? Daniel 4, 30 through 33. Scarlet? Daniel 4, 30 through 33. Scarlet? Four minutes. Daniel. Oh. Daniel 4, 30 through 33. Is it for Yeah. <clears throat> the king's Sorry, the king spake and, and said, Is not this great Babu <clears throat> sorry Babylon Bab Bab Babylon. Babylon Thank you that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken the kingdom is departed from thee 32 as well and 33 oh, oh 33 Sorry. Two, three. Okay. and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the with the beasts of the field thy shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thy know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of man of sorry of men and give it giveth it to whomever he will. The same the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the drew, the sorry, with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. All right. So the question I have here is, uh, if I allow myself to become a whoremonger, then suddenly I'm idolizing. Um, there is one who did this in Daniel. How did it turn out for him? Um, yeah. What do we have an answer there, Anthony? Are we, are we talking about Nebuchadnezzar here? I am talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Have you also considered the king that followed, Belshazzar? Well, that is a uh, relative, younger relative of <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. That's true, but I, I, at this point, I'm not really focusing on him. I think yeah, but when we studied the story of Nebuchadnezzar, it's like a long, like stretch. It took some getting through to Nebuchadnezzar, but Daniel revealed Christ, and I think he like grasped it like towards the end of his like reign. And well, me, me, Dad, and uh, Wilson. Right at the end, but at this point in his life, at this point in his life, what's going on? What is what is King Nebuchadnezzar at this point in his life idolizing? His self, his own big head, and his, his own self. wisdom. His self, absolutely. He's idolizing his self. And what is the result? Uh, crawling around on the grass like an oxen. Yep, for seven years. Now, praise God, that's not the end of the story for Nebuchadnezzar. But at this point in his life, that's where it is. He has chosen to idolize. He's chosen to basically make himself a god. Yes. No, I didn't say make himself a god. I said make himself a god. Yeah. He wanted. He wanted. You know. He he wanted the same thing that Satan wants. Satan doesn't want to follow God. Satan wants to replace God. And really disliked, like Daniel, as we were reading, is the 
is it the Chaldeans? They were throughout like the like I bring it short story because it's a pretty big study like in itself. But uh, the Chaldeans was always like uh, they're like trying to convince Nebuchadnezzar to kill Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and like coming out with like random stuff like it's them that's doing it. Our question like it's uh, Daniel or them that's questioning uh, Nebuchadnezzar's. Uh, intelligence whereas Nebuchadnezzar in the story it seems he's looking for wisdom and not like the he's looking more for wisdom in the stories than he is looking for them but he ends up turning them into a dunghill anyway so it didn't work out for them when they were following Satan so Satan kills Satan in itself he seals his own sit his own kingdom and tramples them underfoot so it's the same sort of thing there that happened to them Amen. Fortunately, this was not the end of the story for Nebuchadnezzar, as I mentioned earlier. As the report <laughs> flows forward, Daniel 4, 34 through 7, uh, 37. Uh, Ron, do you have that for me? Yes, I do. Daniel 4, 34 through 37. And at the end of the days, uh, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. And mine understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, what doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned to me. For the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. My counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent <coughs> majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven and all those who are truth and whose all whose works are truth in his way of judgment. Um, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase okay amen so um if possible and i know sometimes a cough just comes along and that's all there is to it but if possible if you're gonna cough try and mute yourself first um i know that sometimes isn't possible i get that but just as possible so what ends up happening with King Nebuchadnezzar now? Uh, he's back in charge. Who's in charge? Uh, well, he's in charge of the kingdom on God's behalf, shall we say. Amen. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar comes to understand, wait a minute, I got to get my priorities straight. And he comes back with a totally different mindset. And yes, he is restored by God into his position. Does it not seem the same as when Jesus says, first seek the kingdom of God? It's this, it's, it's out in, it's actually at play there. It's, it's the, without seeking the kingdom of God, he was a big headed dude. And then he ended up on his belly like an ox and sweating to death and all this bad stuff happening to him and he's pretty much had a breakdown but then Amen. seeking the kingdom of god it's things are looking back like up for him but he's glorifying the father instead of himself and his own wisdom amen amen i and we by the way a welcome to the call esther i and Thanks. we could learn much from the choices and consequences of Nebuchadnezzar's doing, both from the negative and positive side. Negative. Bottom line, as we idolize that which we have done, we are in danger of related consequences flowing forward to us, thus making these words about idolization crystal clear as they relate to our connotation uh, of whoremongering. Does being an unclean person
person also cause us to perform a type of idolization. Yes, it is to embrace this attitude. Isaiah 22, 13. Um, I, I, I'm just kind of bound. Oh, um, Esther, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 22, 13. Isaiah 22, 13. Yeah. Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22. Okay. 13. 22, 13. 22, 13. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Is this true joy and gladness? And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Right. So is this true joy and gladness? No. No, it's not. This Sorry, is the yeah. world's joy and gladness. Because if we're focusing on the fact, well, tomorrow we're going to be dead, well, we're not focusing on life. We're focusing on death. Who's the it's author like, of death? Satan. It's like you said, not the old way of worshiping. It's like the saying now, isn't it? You've got one life, live it. That's pretty much like a new way. It's yeah, pretty way. much, right? Yeah. That's definitely the old way of, of worshiping. Amen. That's the law of sin and death right there. There you go. It's the, um, what do you call it? The sacrificial system. Because that's what they used to kill. Ox, sheep. Then they used to eat it, get drunk. Well, I'm going to lean back on that just a little bit. Because the sacrificial system was put in place to point forward to who? To Christ. To Christ. So yeah, as, as much as death comes from Satan, the sacrificial system had its position within life. Jesus and his father both said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than oh. being offered. Just that's, uh, if, I, if I may chip in one or two things there. The sacrifice Jesus was trying to talk about is the one that is done with lip service, lip service with hypocrisy. It's not about the, the, the one that is done with a clean mind. If you, don't, if you do a sacrifice with a clean mind, there's no amount of sacrifice that God will not accept. So, and the, our ultimate sacrifice is jesus christ so if we are to sacrifice our life our finances our everything we have to do it in the pattern of christ though he said that jesus christ actually said that he prefers mercy and forgiveness and other things that he does not want sacrifice that is done with 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 a, a biased mind so because people people christians normally uh, don't understand that particular uh, verse that jesus christ said so they just thought that a sacrifice, a sacrifice that we are giving to God now is not with, uh, with flesh. It's not that, that, that we kill with blood. It is our worship. It is our reference. It is, it is our service. So we should take note of that. It is our worship, our service, and our reference to God that we, and we, we, and we do that. We, all we, that we are serving, we are serving. You, we, are, we are doing the service of God to our fellow human beings. So if we want to do, if we, if we want to sacrifice, we must do it with a clean mind. And that is the kind of sacrifice God accepts. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. That, that's not the sacrifice that Jesus meant that he, he, he doesn't desire. That, see, that is what God always intended. He always intended for the sacrifice to be the sacrifice that it should be, not for the sacrifice that it was. That that's not that's not Jesus is doing. That's not God's yeah. doing. You see, and by pursuing that, 
the Jews at the time, no matter how much they claim to do this and burn that and do this and do that, you cannot, no matter how many ox or how many sheep you kill, it does not give salvation. The only, the only sheep that brings salvation, the only, the, the only, the only salvation anything was the, is the lamb, the lamb of God that brings salvation. Because <clears throat> what happens if you, like Jesus turned around and he said in uh, John 8, he was discussing with the Jews their understanding and his understanding and why they weren't listening to him and why it wasn't clear what he said. And he said, the reason you don't understand me is because you, my father is not your father. Your father is the father of lies, it's the devil. And that if you pursue his interests, you can sacrifice as many sheep, as many bulls, whatever, as, as you like. And you're making yourself a burnt offering because along with the devil, within the lake of fire, that's where you end up. A burnt offering of yourself. I have a question. Yes. I don't have a question. Please, does God still accept our sacrifice? Considering that we are a living sacrifice. <laughs> If we give us our life, we give our voice, if we give our attention to God, does he receive it? Does God need our sacrifice? I don't mean slaying of lamb. I don't mean any other thing that has to do with killing. A million percent. You're absolutely right what you're saying there because we give up all our possessions, which is this physical fleshy form that we have. We give up this life um, and we take up our cross with, with Jesus Christ. So, yeah, we're sacrificing this, this short, simple life because it's not really death. We know that it's sleep. And we know that, like Jesus said, we're going to be sown into the ground because isn't everything that's sown into the ground must die. Every seed must die. And then new life comes forward from that Again. seed dies. And that's the sacrifice Jesus and the Father are talking about. And though there is death, in a sense, in our understanding of death, though those words death is not God's word, because he calls it sleep through Jesus Christ, we're taught that the word of God says that that, that first death is, is sleep. Um, but in our understanding, there's an element of death involved that we have the unknown. We, we, we've we been bound to this law of sin and death, and therefore we must complete the course. We must prove our faith, that our belief, in the fact that we are willing to follow Christ exactly where he went, which was in which was into the grave, he was in the tomb, we must also go there and then we'll be resurrected up with Christ when he when he shouts us out. Amen. Amen. Wherein all caution is thrown to the wind for the embracement <laughs> of whatever whenever simply because uh, it is what we want we idolatize we idolize i we idolize the desire of self gratification to our own ruin matthew 24:43 marcel matthew 24:43 Twenty-four. Forty-three. <coughs> but know this that if the good man of the house had known it, in what watch the thing would come he would have watched and as ye think not the son of man cometh no i think you, but, might, you missed the line but know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up and finally, we return to the act of covetousness. Is it really a form of idolization? Yes. 
and one that we can lead us into utter ruin as we build the wrong treasure house. Matthew 6, 19. Anthony? Yes. You'll get that, Marcel, 6, 19. Come on. 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Thus forsaking divine guidance. Matthew 6, 20. Wrong. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Please notice at the end of both of these verses is this symbol. It's the colon. Also known as what, guys? Period with a point. A period with a point. Which I call a period with a point. The point of verse 19 is verse 20. The point of verse 20 is verse 21. Thus the point now flows forward. Verse 21. Um, Irene? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Perhaps that is why Paul says elsewhere, Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. As this process flows forward, we arrive at the final part of this verse. Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? As we opt for idolizing what we do, who we are, or what this world offers, we lose this. Romans eight seventeen, uh, Scarlet. Romans eight seventeen. Romans And if children, then heirs, heirs, <laughs> sorry, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of, with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, and we may be also glorified together. And gain this, Matthew ten thirty seven, Indiana. Um, yeah. What was the verse again? Matthew 10, 37. <coughs> um, 37. Okay. He that loveth father or mother more than, he, more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Just a curiosity question. Is this verse thus suggesting that we don't love one another no nope. no but instead what it's doing is saying your love for your dad your love for your mom your love for your brother your love for your sister your love for your daughter your love for your son <sighs> should not be greater than your love for the father or his son a temporary momentary place of love but as we become unworthy of christ the consequences that flow forward are john 12 25. Uh, without, Esther? without christ and without god what is it that people think they're holding on to what is it that people are holding on to, or what do, what do they think they're holding on to? A million percent, what do they actually think? What is the substance that they think they're actually holding on to if they're not holding on to Christ or, and the Father? 
then so the, the, the no. to their independence, their freedom, their their uh, their their ability to be them. And, and what do they what they what do they actually conceive that to be? I'm not because, sure if there's an answer for that. Because I, I am. Should I without, read the John twelve twenty five? Hang on a second, Esther. Literally, with without God, how would any man be alive? Because He is our Father. He Amen. is our Father. We have no other Father. So if we are loving our mother and father, that means we're praising the flesh, that we owe our life to the flesh. That's not correct because the flesh was the dust gathered up by God when he, by the Lord God, when he gathered the dust of the ground from the moist earth. And are we just a lump of dirt? No, because what will give us life is the second part of that. He bent down and breathed in, into our nostrils the breath of life. Amen. And that's what gave us life. There is no other life other than that. We we receive that breath. He breathed through our parents into us. He breathed through. He breathed into all life, into all creation. We did not receive life from our parents. We did not receive life from any of our forefathers. And he, he, Jesus made it clear. He said, "I can raise my father if he wanted to raise up nations. He could raise up children from these stones." Reminding us from the very place that if God so wanted to start another creation, another race of people, he could literally just gather them up from the stones and breathe life into them as he saw fit. But he doesn't do that. Okay, I'm going to he, pause here for one second because um, we have just a little bit left here. Um, but we are um, at the three o'clock hour. I want to close with prayer while Ron's on the line. So who will amen. close with prayer and then we'll just wrap this up. Who's got me for that? Come on. I could do it. Go ahead, Marcel. Our oh, Father in heaven, I thank you today for bringing us here and teaching us your holy word in your holy word. And I pray that you let, let us go out through this week, the new week, and bring forth new fruits to your kingdom of heaven. In your mighty son's name, I pray all these things. Amen. 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 Anthony, I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. No, no, no. I didn't realize what time it was. Oh, go ahead. Take care, oh. everyone. God bless you, Ron. Bye, Ron. Take care, Ron. And right. yeah, it's, it's like literally something that's so simple that the world seems to be overlooking is the simple fact that God is our Father, that we are the children of God, that we are the sons, lowercase sons of God, and that He 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 is He is the only. Th the only thing that we owe our life to our existence is the Father and the Son because it says basically with, with Jesus being like the Word in, in the flesh and that all things were made by him and through him, that we owe them everything. They brought us into existence. We have, there is no earth, there is, really there is no earthly existence. There's only the Spirit that gives life. It's the Spirit what, what gives us life. Mm -hmm. I forget where I was going earlier on, but yeah, it's okay. something that just keeps crossing my path constantly, 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 constantly. Today, there's a verse I'd like to read, and you probably know which one it's going to be. It's uh, Job 34, 14, and 15. Okay. Can you get that from me, Marcel? Let's go. Uh, and I just, it just keeps popping up to absolutely everything, and I just think it makes it, the content of it just makes 34, yeah. Yeah, I love this verse now. What time is it? What, not what time? 30, 14 and 15, go back. 14 up, 14 and 15. Job 34, 14 and 15. And it's obviously speaking about God here. This is Elihu speaking to Job, and he says, if he, God, set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish, and man shall turn again to dust. And it's just the it's the fact that's spoken in there that if not if he gather unto himself his spirit 
and his breath. That's the, that's the fact. All flesh shall perish. If there was none of his spirit and none of his breath, then man does not exist. Man is just the dust of the earth once again, just like the salt um, that loses its savour. It's, it's only fit to be cast on the floor and trodden underfoot by men. Malachi 4. Amen. All right, let's go to John 12, 25. I do need to wrap this up. I've got a commitment afterwards, but John 12, 25. Uh, Esther, do you want to get that for me? Yeah, I was already reading it. It says, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Amen. Please note, it was our own actions that caused us to become unworthy, but not and not the Father or the Son of unconditional agape love. Their hearts are quite clear. John six thirty seven, Marcel. All that the Father giveth me shall come of to me. And him that cometh to me, I will know, wise cast out. Amen. Our Amen. failure to choose to come shuts the door to eternal salvation rather than an action brought forward by the Father or his Son. On that note, we've already prayed, so I'll just say uh, everybody have a great weekend, uh, week and weekend ahead and everything, and uh, we will catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Please, please Bye. remember, Bye. We, we have Bye. gone through a time change, so um, the, the timing will be different than what it has been. I think we catch up this week. This new week. Oh, do you go through a time change? Yeah, I want to awesome. Yeah, I think we should be going through it now. Got it. Maybe. I hope so. Anyway. All righty. So we'll see you all next week or online. Speak to you soon. Goodbye, bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.